today specifically for the unveiling of portraits of notable Laurentians and the rededication of Stockton Park. And again, we appreciate the collaboration between Groundworks Lawrence, City of Lawrence, Mass Cultural Council, and the Lawrence Public Schools. Um, this morning we're going to get started with the presentation of the flags with our JROTC Color Guard unit under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Huff. If we can now face a flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could all remain standing for the national anthem. Again, we thank the JROTC Color Guard and the Massachusetts Old Six. We did want to also recognize other elected officials who have joined us today. City Councilor Rich Russell, uh, City Councilor Anna Levy, and City Councilor Giovanni Rodriguez, as well as School Committee Member Jonathan Guzman. To get us started today, we're going to have some opening remarks from the Mayor of the City of Lawrence, Mr. Brian A. DePena. Good morning, everyone. That's a great moment for the city of Lawrence. I want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Our state rep, Francisco Paulino, Councilor Rip Russell, Senator Pavel Payano, Superintendent, Councilor Ana Levy, Ramon Lawrence. He may need a um, new face to the city of Lawrence, you change the face to the city of Lawrence. Thank you for your job, great job. Mr. Mariano, my high honor, my respect for you. Thank you for being here. Consular President Malaplan, Chief of Police, William Castro, to my family, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to say welcome to the events that is a big moment for the city of Lawrence because recognize a very important hero 
Um, for many years, the city of Lawrence made honor to different persons, different people, different uh, heroes. But it's great honor for me because everybody remembers a couple of, for many years, the president of the city of Lawrence made many complaints about this park. This park, I remember a couple of years ago when I visited Mr. Roger Tommy in his house. He told me, Mr. City Council Brian de Peña, if you promise you're doing something or you take an action for a sort of park, I don't know if you have my support, but you have my respect. And I promise, Mr. Tumi, don't worry. Never I forgot. Uh, you have your heart for this park. That's the reason in the corner, my administration, you know, uh, put a fountain, knife fountain. And today, I remember this, this park have only a little, little sign, the Santo Park. Now today, the park have it, a new plaque. And I want to say thank you for, for the new picture, for the idea, uh, Mr. Councilor President. I know you're working very hard for change the Santo Park. Welcome for the ceremony. God bless America, and God bless the city of Florida. Uh, the mayor also has some uh, recognitions that he would like to give as well right now. Um, so when we please, when we call your name, please come up, and the mayor will be uh, recognize you with this. Um. Okay, we'll 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 do that at the end, and we'll continue it on with the program. At this point, um, with project comments, we're going to welcome City Council President Mark Laplante. Wow, what a day. I can't believe this is here. Are you kidding me? Honest to goodness, this thing has been, uh, been working for some time. I gotta tell you, it's been going on, going now, uh, not only with this administration, quite frankly, without the support of Brian A. DePena, we would not be here right now. But this thing has, has, has eclipsed not only this administration, but the prior two administrations. I was looking at some emails back in 2019 saying, hey, what can we do about making merging some art and merging some history and Stockton Park? And um, and we got it done. When I say we, it's not just me. It is we because it's more than just one person that got this that got this to today. I will grant you. I'll take a little pat in the back. It's starting this. I'll take that. But where we are today, it happened because of a lot of fantastic people who made today possible. None other, I gotta tell you, I, I, I really need, in addition to the mayor, who's the co-sponsor of this, and allowing this to go forward, another leading light in making today possible and making what we're gonna see here possible is my good friend, Pat Mariano, with the Cultural Council. Yes. So what is this about and where are we going with this, right? So this is, um, I was thinking last night as I was on my computer figuring out what I was gonna to say today, and the thing lasted about an hour and a half, and I go, I can't talk for an hour. I mean, I could talk for an hour and a half, but I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half today. So I'm going to try to make this as concise as possible regarding what it, what is today about and where are we going in the future with this. Our history, we are a young city. We are a very young city. We were incorporated in 1847, became a city in 1853. We're very, very young compared to all the surrounding areas. And it's amazing the number of, of people that were residents or members or have impacted our city over the course of whatever the math is, 175, I think is the number. Is that about right? Pull out your calculators. So it's amazing what the impacts are. And and I was and I was I was standing or sitting at a at a city council meeting once, and two of my colleagues said, and one is right here, Councilor Rodriguez and Councilor Del Rosario. 
and they said, we don't know anything about all these markers and all these things. They're just names. And I'm thinking to myself, they're right. They're 100% right. Until we start talking about their stories and what the impact are in our city, they're just names. They're just names. And so what this project is about is two things. One, it's about making sure that we start to tell their stories. These are five people that are impactful. I can talk to you briefly about why they were selected. That's number one. Number two, we have an arts community. It's phenomenal in this city. And we need to make sure that we foster and endorse and, and project them and get them involved. And if you can merge both our history and our art together, what a powerful combination. Unbelievably powerful. And this special spot is going to be where that confluence takes place. So, where are we going with this? Um, very simply, these five people were chosen for these reasons. We have Stockton. Well, the park is named after Stockton, and, and, and Senator Payano will, speak, will be speaking to, to Howard Stockton shortly, number one. Number two, we have Alex Jimenez. Now, Alex Jimenez's father, Andy, is here, and I want to say thank you for the, for the sacrifice and the contribution that you did. I want to stand up and clap and say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. We have with us, in addition, we have Greg Ken. Now, Andy Jimenez, and, and that's going to be uh, spoken about by uh, Leslie Melendez, who'll tell the story. Um, Greg Kent uh, was also uh, on our, uh, on our, one of our guys as well that's listed here. Um, and I, I got to tell you that we, we do have somebody here um, who was one of Greg Kent's closest friends. It's, it's a guy that Greg says, you have to come out here and, and join me in Vietnam when he was there. And Frank Perry, his friend, decided to join the Marines and went to Vietnam. And not only did he go to Vietnam, he reminded me this morning that he actually replaced Greg Kent when Greg Kent died on the field of battle in Vietnam. And Frank Perry is here, for example. And I wanted to thank you, Frank, for being here today. Thank you. We also have um, one of the other individuals we're, we're, we're going to talk about today is Susan Crocker. Listen, our women, and, and Pat Mariano is going to talk about that, but our, our, our women, embarrassingly, don't have enough monuments. I, we know that without the women in our city, we wouldn't have the kind of city we are today. And, and it's, just, it's partly a shame that we don't have more because we need to understand their stories. And then today we're going to know a little bit about Susan Crocker and what the impact that she had at starting Lawrence General Hospital. And I'm so thankful that we're going to have that kind of con that, that plaque. And, and the last one is Abbott Lawrence. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Abbott Lawrence, but how do you have a feel of these five without talking about the name of the person who the city is named after? So we'll talk about, about Abbott uh, Lawrence. But where do we go from here? So very simply is this. Before the city council, we have a proposal to deal with a uh, Stockton Park Commission. Without a proper commission, I want to take it out of the politicians' hands. No offense to my colleagues who are elected officials that are here, but I really want to allow the community to determine who is it in the succeeding years that's going to be up there, number one. Number two, I want them to be able to raise the kind of funds that are necessary to, to not have the city be able to go ahead and have to fund all these things. And thank you to the Lawrence Cultural Council for all the little things that you're seeing, some not so little, that you're seeing here today to bring the resources here. And I think that we need to have this grow every two or three years and have this commission go ahead, find out who the artists are, pick the artist, figure out who it is that's going to be the next person behind this, behind these things as we go forward. So I'm doing a little gentle lobbying to my colleagues because some of the table matters at this point. We could change it as much as we need to, but I really think we need to move toward the Stockton Park Commission because this is a very unique park in the city of Lawrence, unlike any other. Our parks are all different, but this is going to merge these two things. So I'm looking for some support on, on that. So with that, that's my opening statement at this point. I want to thank all of you so, so much uh, for being here today. This is an amazing day. Pat Marion of the Cultural Council will we'll we'll hand these things out at the end are these amazing collector items coins. And on these coins, what you're going to see are very 
tiny pictures of each one of these uh, five individuals. It is something that you're going to cherish. It's something you're going to keep. It's going to be an amazing keepsake. And um, it's, it's a special morning. So with that, thank you so much. And I, it, I, it, we're here today, and I'm so, so, so happy. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. And we did want to recognize um, that our friend Estella Reyes, state rep and city council member, has also joined us up front. At this time, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Senator Payano to present the portrait of Howard Stockton. Thank you, Superintendent. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, no, come on, man. We're all from Lawrence here. Good morning. Good morning. All right. That's that's what I, you know, uh, when I think of Lawrence, I always think about energy. Uh, and it was great waking up this morning knowing I was going to be in front of all of you here today uh, to rededicate uh, this park and uh, see the incredible work that's been done over the course of several years. I want to thank um, uh, Mayor De Pena and this administration for sort of putting the final touches on a project that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, my former colleagues in the city councils and those that came uh, before us, uh, and also uh, the state delegation, uh, Representative uh, Francisco Paulino, Representative Stella Reyes, and uh, Representative and Leader uh, Frank Moran, uh, and a lot of other former reps and senators, like Senator Feingold, Rep. Minacucci, that really did a lot of you know great work in ensuring that uh, there were state funds coming into this project uh, to make sure uh, that this happened. Now, you know my history of uh, learning about uh, Stockton started when I was uh, in high school, uh, and in high school when we were asked, like, well, you know, why is this little uh, area named after him? You know, I was told because he was a veteran. Years later, I was told, oh yeah, he, he worked for the mills. And uh, researching uh, Stockton, I learned uh, a whole lot more about how, uh, who he was and the various roles that he played uh, across his, uh, his life. Uh, he was an attorney. Uh, he was known for playing vital roles in uh, all sorts of different companies going from the railroads, textiles mills, uh, to uh, banking institutions. Normally, uh, there are three separate uh, sort of careers, you would think, and this man was playing pivotal roles uh, in, all, uh, in all three. Uh, but we are here today because of his commitment to Lawrence and the bravery uh, that he showed while he was uh, a Union soldier. So he was born during a time, a very tumultuous time, when the, the country was grappling with uh, what to do with, uh, with, with slavery and the, the enslavement of millions of people. He decided to join the Union Army, and because of his leadership and dedication, he rose swiftly to the ranks, becoming captain. After uh, being, uh, being a soldier and coming back, he was in, in, in Boston, and he played a lot of pivotal roles and influential roles uh, in Boston, be being a trustee of MIT and also a prominent figure uh, of the Episcopalian uh, Diocese. But we, we know him because of the work that he did here in Lawrence. As treasurer of the Essex Manufacturing Company uh, and later the Essex Company, uh, he continued the legacy uh, left by the city's founder, Charles Starrow, and in a pivotal role in our history, he all oversaw the small transfer of a significant piece of South Lawrence land, which we're sitting here today, uh, on April 1897. And, you know, now this park uh, that's graced with his name stands as a testament to his enduring legacy and the profound impact he had on our community. Uh, it's a place where the past and the present converge, a place where we can reflect on the contributions of this extraordinary individual and find inspiration in his legacy. Today, as we rededicate Stockton Park, we pay homage to a man whose life was an embodiment of service, dedication, and progress. And I hope that this park uh, serves as a living testament uh, to his memory and a place where the spirit of his commitment to both the city of Lawrence, our country, and the ideals he fought for uh, can forever thrive. Uh, so I, I thank you all for joining us uh, on this occasion. Uh, and I, I want to thank also uh, our city council president, uh, Mark LaPlante. Uh, every time I, I, when I talk about him, I say that he's the historian of the city of Lawrence. I want to thank uh, you know, council president Mark LaPlante for uh, making sure that history stays alive and that the city's citizens of Lawrence know who 
we are naming people, uh, we are naming uh, parks and different areas about so that the uh, service uh, that Laurentians from, from the past did stay alive today. So uh, thank you all. Also invite all the elected officials uh, to join the mayor. We're going to do the unveiling of the monument as well uh, to Stockton Park. So it's great. Three, two, one. At this time, we're going to invite State Representative Francisco Paulino, Paulino to present the portrait of Greg Kent. Good morning. Uh, special thanks to Mark LaPlan, who have been inviting me to this event for months to Mayor Brian De Peña, all city councilors, and everybody to make this event today possible. Um, before presenting a piece of art, in, in honor to Rick Ken, I would like to speak a little bit about him. Um, and thank you, Mark Lepin, for uh, forwarding me his, um, all the information about him. I got impressed. Rick Kent was born in Lawrence, and he grew up in the Beacon Hill project. He was a regular kid, and like many other Laurentians, he was a great athlete. He was not just great, he was one of the best in the country. But he also was a good student. He went to Weatherby, Weatherby Middle School, he went to Lawrence High, and he holds many, many records uh, as an athlete, running and making the whole city proud. He have a dream. He, he dreamed he dream about being, bring to Lawrence an Olympic medal. And when he graduated high school, he received 72 scholarship offers, which he declined. He was also invited to, to the tryout for the Olympic team. He was Olympic team and he declined because he feel that he need to serve his country and join the Marines. So he did. He did that in November 1967. And he made his family and the whole town proud, the whole country. So he went to defend this nation to be named. So less than five months so he departed. He called his friend, Mr. Perry, this year, 
and told him, look, join the Marines, we need you here. We need you to be one of the few, one of the proud. So he did. But March 28, 1967, he died defending this country, defending the freedoms, and what we stand here today, defending the right to unveil his, his piece of art on his honor and many others. Uh, Greg Kim was a great kid from Lawrence, and he defended this country with pride. And for that reason, uh, we all to honor his memory. And I want to say thank you to Stephanie Lima, the artist who did his portrait. And I would, ask, I would like to ask Stephanie, please unveil Greg Kim's portrait for all of us. Thank you very much, Representative Paulino. Um, at this time, we're going to welcome Leslie Melendez from Groundworks Lawrence, and she will be presenting the portrait of Alex Jimenez. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the rededication of Stockton Park and the presentation of these amazing art pieces. Since 1999, Groundwork Lawrence has been changing places, changing lives, and changing systems. In partnership with the City of Lawrence, we have been able to work with the community to reimagine green spaces, investing over $25 million to build and renovate over 28 parks. Stockton is one of those parks. For a long time, people have talked about doing something here, changing it, making it better. Former Councilor Toomey and Council President LaPlante took the charge and worked diligently to keep this renovation top of mind for the city. And although it took a little longer than expected, here we are today because of their steadfast leadership. Today we celebrate our work, our history, those that came before us, and those that walked with us. As you look around and see these amazing works of art, done in, in dedication of some amazing Laurentians. Today I have the honor to speak in remembrance of one of those Laurentians, Alex Jimenez. While Alex may have grown up in Queens and the Dominican Republic, he claimed Lawrence as his home, a place where he went to school and played Little League, a place where he took Taekwondo classes. The events of May 12, 2007 impacted the city and its residents as it had for sons in previous wars. Jimenez was part of the Army's 2nd Brigade, 10th Mountain Division, when he was on patrol with seven other soldiers and a translator in an Iraqi town 38 miles southwest of Baghdad, an area known as the Triangle of Death. His patrol consisted of two Humvees seeking roadside bombs when they were hit by automatic weapons and explosives. Five were immediately killed, and three, including Jimenez, were declared missing. For the next 424 days, family and friends often gathered to find solace and peace, as periodic information would be released about the missing in action soldier. While there was a discovery of things such as Jimenez's gun and identification, the Army finally gathered enough information to inform the family that he was killed by the Iraqi insurgents. His remains were found a few miles from the May 12th ambush. Not that long ago, Lawrence paid tribute to Alex with the Canal Street Bridge over the Spicker River. And today we honor Alex with this amazing piece of art. Alex once said, I believe that in the US Army, I may reach my goals, which are being all that I can be. If I ever get recruited, I promise to fight for the innocent who can't fight for themselves and for the United States of America. And that is exactly what he did. He gave the ultimate sacrifice for this country. And now to unveil Lawrence's tribute to one of its sons, Heather Langlois, please unveil Sydney Susan Mee's portrait of Alex Jimenez.
I don't want to be in the way. Trust me. <laughs> I'll make sure. So I'm very thankful for all the support that I received today. I've never felt alone in this town or anywhere I've gone. The support I've received has been worldwide. I'd like to say something that I wasn't planned for this. All these people who are here, Deserve respect. Yo le pido a todas las autoridades que están aquí a la policía. I ask for all the authorities who are here. The things like cosas como esa. Like this, where a vehicle entró aquí. Where a vehicle came into this park. Debe debe tener sus consecuencias. Should have its consequences. Primero respeto a la ciudad. First, respect a toda la familia. In respect of honor of the city and respect of honor of the people. Let me go back. That he should put a sign and, and consequences to people who choose to break the law like this. Please excuse me, this makes me feel bad. If somebody deserves what these people to have the recognition, but I just had to speak up, but we shall have some more respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we're going to welcome Ms. Pat Mariano from the Lawrence Cultural Council, from the Lawrence School Committee, and from the LAE Board um, to present our, the portrait of Dr. Susan Crocker. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yesterday at this time, I was in Florida, and it was 80 degrees. So I am freezing. But anyway, I wouldn't miss this for the world. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here this morning as we rededicate Stockton Park and celebrate five individuals who contributed so much to this great city. As chairman of the Lawrence Cultural Council, I am proud to say that the council played a significant role in the execution of this celebration. I would like to take a moment to introduce the members of the council who are with us today. Bridget Rodding, would you please stand? <laughs> Kathy DiFilippo. Kathy. Where are you, Kathy? Very well. I didn't see Elsa Sanchez. Are you here today? No? Okay. Well, Elsa Sanchez. And Heather Abreu is attending a conference today, and she couldn't be with us this morning. In planning of this event, it became evident that we would be tapping into many individuals and their ability to make things happen. I would like to thank Heather Langloy, the Supervisor of Visual and Performing Arts at Lawrence High School, and the student artists that are with us today, who under Heather's direction, created these incredible portraits. Finally, a special thank you to Mark LaPlante, who I feel has earned the esteemed title of Lawrence's resident historian. Yeah. <laughs> From the idea's inception, Mark has led the charge to make this living memorial become a reality. It was an honor for me to work alongside Mark in this project. So what will the future hold for these panels? Speaking for the Cultural Council, our hope is that these panels will become a living history for generations to come. And as each person is recognized, their individual contributions to the city will be celebrated and rewarded. As a special remembrance of this day, we created for the first 100 guests that are here a commemorative coin, which on one side has the portraits of our honorees and on the other side, the flag of our city with today's date. As you arrive today, you are asked to take a ticket from the Cultural Council table, and at the end of this program, 
you may redeem that ticket for a coin. We hope this we hope this will be a keepsake that you will cherish for years to come. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Susan Crocker. Susan Wood was born in Halifax, Massachusetts in 1836. She married her childhood sweetheart, Charles Crocker, in 1856. During the early years of their marriage, Stu Susan studied medicine at New, York, New York's Women's Infirmary. And after 25 years of marriage, Charles Crocker died in Lawrence in 1881. While in Lawrence, Dr. Crocker and a group of ladies formed the Ladies Union Charitable Society of Lawrence to care for children of mothers who had to work. And if you think of it, that was probably our first daycare. <laughs> when scarlet fever took hold, Dr. Crocker and the woman felt that the sick children needed to be isolated and receive medical care. The society ladies and Dr. Crocker rented a home at 16 Montgomery Street with Dr. Crocker providing free medical care. As the years went on, Dr. Crocker developed rules and procedures for admission and was responsible for the construction of a new hospital building on Methuen Street and opened a training school for nurses to assist at the hospital. She served a year as hospital president and then moved on to the board of trustees and a member of the medical staff. As she aged, she left the area to spend her final years with her brother in California. Today we celebrate you, Dr. Susan Crocker. I'd ask Celine Grin, would you please unveil your portrait of Dr. Susan Crocker? And at this time, we're going to welcome City Council President Mark LaPlante back up uh, to unveil the portrait of Abbott Lawrence. Thank you very much. Here's a quote by Robert Tewksbury. The broad comprehension, unwavering faith, and large capacity of Abbott Lawrence should never be forgotten by dwellers in the city that bears his name. More than once, when vital interests were in peril, he came to rescue, to the rescue with the safe counsel and timely financial aid. So fewer tributes with greater distinction than actually naming a town or a city after somebody. It's, it's the biggest thing that I think that a, a state government, we've got state officials there, can do, I think, for naming rights, right? And yet, how Abbott Lawrence is that is that guy that named it for us? An amazing story. Again, it could be there are books written about him, so I'm going to condense it as best I can. So his roots come back from the puritanical days when they came from England. Make no mistake, he was a Yankee, a Yankee Brahmin. His dad actually fought in the Revolutionary War in the militia, and fought in Bunker Hill. Abbott Lawrence and the, and the Lawrence family actually grew up and resided in Groton, Mass. And it's no surprise that Abbott um, Lawrence Academy is in Groton, Massachusetts because of the amazing contributions that family has made, not only to our city and to Massachusetts, but quite frankly, to the United States of America. He wanted to serve in the military he served in this thing called the New England Guard. He was ready to go in the War of 1812, but the war didn't last long enough for him to actually get involved in the fight. And shortly thereafter, there was this drive, this economic drive. He wanted to be a businessman, and he hooked up with his brother, Amos, which is going to be a side note here in a second. So he and Amos were in Boston, and they and they were they 
Kings formed a store and, and, and did some, uh, uh, were a store and did some merchant work where they were bringing goods in from Great Britain, from England, and were able to sell them here in the United States in the, in the Boston area. During that time, there was only one time that he served in local government, and that's when he became a member of the Boston City Council back in 1831. Again, only, it's the only time, one term. He then went at some point to, to serve on the United States Congress and then in the House of Representatives, and his party was the Whig Party. Now that's, for some of you who don't know what the Whig Party was, we don't have that anymore, uh, but it was somewhat the kind of the precursor maybe to the Republican Party in some strange ways, but it never, but the Whig Party is where he was. He had a lot of connections while he's in with the Whig Party, um, but he also got, he got hurt, he got some sort of illness while he was a, a member of Congress and decided not to run. But he made a very close friendship with a guy by the name of uh, Zachary Taylor. And Zachary Taylor was a president of the United States. And Zachary Taylor wanted Abbott Lawrence to be his vice president. But then the machinations of Washington took over again and this guy, Abbott Lawrence, lost to another guy named Millard Fillmore. So Millard Fillmore actually became the vice president. And if times have changed just a little bit, Abbott Lawrence might have been the vice president and then the president. Why? Because Tyler died while in office and Fillmore became president. Wouldn't that have a little bit of a strange twist today while we're standing here maybe remembering President Abbott Lawrence as opposed to what became to be Ambassador Abbott Lawrence because the gift, the, the job that he got afterwards was, was Fillmore actually gave him, or Ta Taylor actually gave him a job to be the minister to Great Britain. But why are we here? What's the Lawrence connection? So the Lawrence connection is very simple. He was a businessman, a merchant. He saw an opportunity to make some money here. He did some stuff in Lowell with his brother and then he came to Lawrence and there was an opportunity to use the water power that we cross over almost every day, the Merrimack River. And he said, we can make some money here with mills. And he did. He purchased land along, <coughs> part, partly him, but some others as well, alongside both sides of the Merrimack River. And he owned in custody of the Essex Company because that's what he formed. The Essex Company purchased land across both sides. And then mills started to be built. Not all by Abbott Lawrence, not all by the Lawrence family, but they got their footprint in there, and it didn't take long, it didn't take long where one of the mills started to go down and have some trouble, the Pacific Mills. And Abbott Lawrence needed to come back again to finance the Pacific Mills to keep it operational, which is where that quote from Tewksbury came from, about coming back to making sure that our city needed it again because we were having some financial problems in the city. But the Abbott Lawrence name, they decided back in 1847 to name it after the Lawrence family, and it's properly attuned today that it was Abbott Lawrence because he was the, he was the president, he was the, the head of the Essex Company. So he got, we are dedicating this to him today because it's Abbott Lawrence, the work that he has done that, um, that made this city named after him. Now the little tidbit about Amos Lawrence's brother, his brother Amos Lawrence, on a side note, I, I kind of find this fascinating. <laughs> On a side note, his son, Amos' son, Amos, is Abbott Lawrence's nephew. Very big in the abolition movement, and he went westward. The city of Lawrence, Kansas, is named after Amos Lawrence, the nephew of Abbott Lawrence. And that's the Lawrence connection between Lawrence, Kansas, because he actually built the university, University of Kansas in Lawrence, and Lawrence, Massachusetts. So I can go on and on about this amazing man, but I think the time is right to invite. I'm going to invite Selena Brim again to please unveil your portrait of Abbott Lawrence.
get the elected up there, please? It's great to see all the artwork, and now uh, we're going to have the mayor um, give uh, an award to the artists, and uh, we're going to start with um, Miss Celine Brand. This means a lot to me, and I'm sure it means a lot to the city of Lawrence as well. I want to say thank you to Miss Mariano, Mr. LaPlante, and the mayor, and Miss Langloy, because Thanks to them, I was able to do this project, and it was a great opportunity for me as a student as well, because sometimes it could be hard for students to express their art outside of a classroom, outside of school. And so I really appreciated this opportunity to express my art and to learn a little bit more about the city of Lawrence, which is the city I grew up in. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to ask uh, Stephanie Delina, uh, Stephanie Delima, please to come up. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who organized this event. It was a uh, an honor and my pleasure to be a part of it. To honor someone who gave up their dream to fight for ours. So thank you. And at this time, we want to ask Heather Lang Lloyd to come up also to, um, to receive her recognition. I think it's so important. Uh, it was an honor and a privilege to recognize these individuals who have had a positive impact in the city of Lawrence. So thank you. <laughs> We also have some citations from the state delegation, so we're going to um, welcome uh, Rep. Paulino out uh, for their citation. Good morning again. To me and the other members of the delegation, including Fran Moran, leader Fran Moran that couldn't be here today, it's an honor to recognize you, the artist. You just did not create a piece of art, you create a piece of history and which we will preserve. And I know my office and the office of Pavel Payano as well as Stella Reyes, we have been working to declare Lawrence a, a, a cultural district so we can bring funding so places like this can receive state funding every year for its preservation and the history they represent. Jimenez, I'm not your kid, he was a great man. Yeah. Sorry, thank you, thank you for the sacrifice. So on behalf of 160 state rep and 40 senators, I'm proud to um, recognize Salim Brain for creating this piece of history. I'd like to call uh, Stephanie Lima.
Okay. And I have the great honor to call Heather Leglose. Heather. Lago. And the last one, the more least important. Sydney Swan Moose. She's not here, but we do give her an applause because she created a piece of history. Thank you very much. And I, I did think we wanted uh, Heather to um, just come up so that Alex's dad could come take a picture with uh, the plaque for Sydney because uh, we did want to take a picture and send it to her for our work. So. Not here, so we're going to give that to the superintendent as well. And we appreciate the fact that she did a great breakfast this morning as well. Thank you. Again, we wanted to thank everyone for coming out today. Tremendous cooperation throughout the city to make this happen. Um, we are concluding our ceremony at this point. Councilor Russell did want to extend an invitation for any Vietnam vet or any Iraqi vet if they want to come up and take some pictures with the, with the portraits at the conclusion of the ceremony. And if you do have a raffle ticket and you have not received your, uh, your commemorative coin, please make sure to go get that. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.